when the world is in crisis. And people are looking for hope and answers. <laughs> Thai PBS World is there with you with the best minds of the day. Join us on Thai PBS World tonight, every weekday at 7 p.m. Thai PBS World, we bring Thailand to the world. สวัสดีค่ะ Very good evening and welcome to our 7 o'clock news Thai PBS World tonight. I am Natha g o m o n w a d i n Good evening, I'm Nad Bunag. And good night. It seems that traveler who would like to come to Thailand will have very good news because Indeed. the cabinet has just approved a big budget and especially special tourist visa to allow foreign travelers to come into Thailand. The Origin of the visa can be 90 days, but they can also ask for extension for 270 days. Thailand is moving cautiously to reopen its border with a new plan to allow foreign visitors to stay in the country for 90 days under a special tourist visa scheme. The new plan is projected to generate 12 billion baht a year. Prime Minister Prayut Chan O Cha said on Tuesday that the cabinet had approved the special tourist visa scheme, and it was aimed at long-staying tourists who arrived intending to travel extensively around the country or access Thailand's healthcare facilities, regarded as among the best in the world. The policy is expected to become effective next month and last until November next year. Prime Minister Prayut described the scheme as possible answer to the challenges posed by the pandemic. He said, "I would like to call on Thai people to support this project because it can contribute to the economy." He also said, "Foreign arrival with a special visa would be required to go through 14-day quarantine at a hospital or certified alternative state quarantine hotel upon their arrival." Deputy government spokesperson t r a i s u l i t r a i s o r a n a k u n said the special tourist visa had been proposed by the Ministry of Tourism and Sports. She said the scheme was intended to attract quality visitors and to revive the tourism industry and related businesses highly affected by the pandemic. Ms. t r a i s u l i said the government was forecasting the scheme to require one to three flights a week for tourists with the special visa, generating an extra one billion baht every month. She also revealed that long-staying visitors would be keen to travel to Thailand and undergo quarantine due to its success in bringing the coronavirus under control. However, she stressed that the special visa would only be issued to foreigners who agreed to undertake the mandatory 14-day quarantine and comply with the country's disease control measures. They must also have proof of their long-stay plans, such as paying for accommodation or evidence of ownership of condominiums where they will stay after completing their quarantine, plus a COVID-19 free certificate and sufficient travel and health insurance. Ms. t r a i s u l i said the visa would last for 90 days and cost around 2,000 baht, but it could be extended twice, each for a further 90 days. Those interested would need to apply to the Tourism Authority of Thailand. So that's the latest on the new visa for the foreign travelers here. And good night concerning politics in Thailand, the mass protest by student-led group. Is about to come in a few days' time on 19 of September, and today there is a warning by Deputy Prime Minister w i s a n u k r u a n g a m told protester not to go near government house and not to venture close to 50 meters of government house or risk a breach of the public assembly law. Citing the Public Assembly Act of 2015, the government's top legal expert said that it bars protesters from government buildings or the compounds of the government offices, especially government house, which is regarded as the seat of the national administration. Meanwhile, Senator Som Chai So Wang Gan claimed in his Facebook post today that, besides students. Several other groups, including people mobilized by some opposition parties, would join the protest. Citing intelligence report, 
He said that many of the protesters will come out on Saturday night at Thammasat University's Tha Prajan campus or at Sanam Luang if the first venue is closed by the university. Groups expected to join the protest are the Assembly of the Poor, the Bad Students Group, Red Shirt Followers, Muslim Students from the southernmost provinces, and automobile and textile labor union members. It is still not known whether the Tha Prajan campus will ultimately be used as the venue for the protest after the university's administration conditionally banned its use by the students, while protest leaders have vowed to use the venue even if they have to break in. Som Chai claimed that if the number of protesters reaches about 20,000, they will march along Ratchadamnern Avenue toward the equestrian statue of King Jalalongkorn at the Royal Plaza, not government house, which he claimed is just a decoy. Meanwhile, Rangsi Manrom, a party list MP for the opposition Gao Klai party, said today that the party's MPs will be present at the protest site to observe and to monitor for any violations of human rights or harassment of the protesters. So we have to quite look forward for what is going to happen in the next few days, Kunat. And that will, be de will definitely be one of the biggest events so far with, regarding the student protests. Moving on to Japanese politics, as we all know that Shinzo Abe has resigned due to health issues, and recently Mr. Yoshide Suga has recently be ele has been elected as the LDP leader, and today he has been officially elected as the prime minister. Yoshide Suga, the newly elected leader of the main ruling Liberal Democratic Party, or the LDP, has been chosen as the new prime minister of Japan. The 71-year-old politician will succeed Shinzo Abe, who resigned due to health issues. Suga supported Abe as chief cabinet secretary for more than seven years. He says he will push forward Abe's policies to deal with the coronavirus and revitalize the economy. He also vows to prioritize administrative and regulatory reforms. More than half of the new cabinet members were part of the Shinzo Abe government, which reflects the new leader's intentions to continue his predecessor's policies. Among those retaining their positions are Finance Minister Taro Aso, who's been in the job for more than seven years. Toshimitsu Motegi will still be the foreign minister who previously led trade talks with the U.S. and Britain. Abe's younger brother, Nobuo Kishi, will take on his first cabinet post as the defense minister, while outgoing defense minister Taro Kono takes charge of administrative reform, a post he has held before. Other, posts, other interesting posts are Yasutoshi Nishimura, Abe's point man on COVID-19 response, remains the economy minister, while trade and industry minister Hiroshi Kajiyama, the son of a politician to whom Suga looked up to as his mentor, also retains his post. So that's the latest on Japanese politics and the new cabinet members of the Suga administration. Yeah. So finally, it's official that Japan has got new prime minister. Yes. And could not when we talk about art and imagination, we tend to think that it's exclusively for human character. But can you imagine if AI can perform art as well? Right. What will it look like? <laughs> and they have new experiment of AIDA or AI who can produce art show. So let's take a look at this report for more details. Art and imagination are often considered to be exclusively human traits. But now, an artificially intelligent robot named Ida has been coded to be created. The robot opened her first commercial art show on Thursday, September the 10th, 2020, at Anka Kultis Gallery in East London. Ida's creator, gallery director, Aidan Miller, says the robot can see with the help of two cameras, one in each eye. They are connected to a computer vision system, which is then interrogated 
by an AI algorithm. That means she's able to do portraits of people that stand in front of her. The thing that the, most people uh, re realize when they see her working is obviously she's using cameras in her eyes. She's able to have a pencil in her hand and literally draw you as a, like a portrait or a landscape or whatever. Uh, but we've also developed various algorithms at the University of Oxford, uh, some fantastic um, postgrad students there have done some incredible algorithms. And so collaboratively, we're able to then use the drawings that she does that then gets translated into paintings. And we've even been able to get now into sculpture. So we've got some incredible bronzes that she's done using those algorithms from the drawings that she did from her eye. The result is not a photorealistic drawing. Instead, Ida's unique work is based on cubism, dashed lines defining a human face. The algorithm means each artwork is unique and won't be repeated by the AI. The exhibit includes drawings that have been translated into paintings with the help of human hands, but Meller says it won't be long till Ida is painting works independently. We're developing her, developing her ability to paint. Uh, it's quite a huge project, actually. Can you, can you imagine pick, picking up a paintbrush and getting the right amount of paint and all the rest of it? But we are actually pushing through all of those technical uh, challenges, and so we're thrilled to say that she is now painting, but we, she's also working collaboratively with humans as well. Created in 2019, Ida is claimed to be the world's first ultra-realistic AI robot artist She's named after Ada Lovelace, a 19th century countess thought to be the world's first computer programmer. The art is created uh, with help of uh, computers, with help of new technologies, and then it manifests itself physically through very classical, in a way traditional, uh, oil painting or, or drawings or with a, with a pencil. So it merges this, you know, and it connects the history of art with the new technologies of the 21st century. Ida is opened at Anka Kulti's gallery in East London and will run to October the 10th, 2020. Looks interesting, but the robots look creepy at the same time. Yeah, look so much like human and it has its own development and probably in the future we cannot tell whether it's AI or whether it's human. <laughs> and it okay, can take that our would job. be a tough question <laughs> in the future. Yeah, and it can also take our jobs as anger in the near future. Really? <laughs> really? Will it really replace news yeah. anchors? <laughs> yeah, as we could see right now, some news organizations like Xinhua also have AI anchor as well. Yeah, yeah. And so that was one of the newest to technology developments that we've yeah. seen so far. But I think it doesn't really replace every single job here because other jobs still requires a lot of creativity, which yeah. AI cannot do. Yeah, at the we still have to keep our human touch to yes. the audience. <laughs> and what about development of other stories, Gunat? And just so you know, these are the stories we've also been following. Ten new cases of COVID-19 have been recorded today who are returnees from India, Indonesia, Myanmar, Ethiopia and Yemen. All of them are now under state quarantine. The new cases raised the total number of infections in Thailand to 3,490 with one new recovery and no new fatalities. The Natural Resources and Environment Minister Wara Wutsilapa Acha has come up with a way to deal with littering at Khao Yai National Park by sending the trash back to those who left it. His action is in response to a social media post by a tourist who complained about littering by campers at the Pak Roi Mai campsite, fearing that some wild animals may eat the garbage and become ill. Littering in a national park is subject to five years in prison and or a fine up to 500 100,000 baht if the littering causes damage to the environment, ecological diversity or natural resources of the park. 
The House of Representatives today began the second and final readings of the budget bill for the 2021 fiscal year. The budget, originally set at 3.3 trillion baht, has been trimmed to 3.28 trillion baht by the bipartisan House Budget Scrutiny Committee, with the funds allocated to the Defense Ministry being cut by 7.78 billion baht, the largest reduction of any ministry. A Thai coconut milk cannery has denied any involvement in the smuggling of liquid methamphetamine into Australia, contained in cans apparently bearing the company's brand name. In August, the Australian Border Force officers inspected an air freight shipment containing 86 cases of canned coconut milk after it arrived in Sydney from Thailand. A test on the liquid from one can indicated the presence of methamphetamine, sparking an investigation. Two people have been arrested after accepting delivery of the shipment. And good not talking about the world economy right now. It's very gloomy thanks to COVID-19 pandemic. And it has been forecast that the whole world is facing global recession. Especially in Thailand, Asian development has forecasted that this year our economy will shrink for 8%. That's a lot. <laughs> yes, that's quite a lot. And if we take a look at the latest project projection, it's a big dip from the bank's forecast of 4 point in April. According to a report titled Asian Development Outlook 20 and 20 Update, Wellness in Worrying Times, according to the report, external demand weakness is likely to continue in the near term even with trade partners gradually recovering as the COVID-19 situation allows them to relax containment measures, economic activity is projected to remain significantly below pre-pandemic norms in many countries. Thailand's earnings from exports of goods and services are now projected to contract more deeply in dollar terms by 22.3% in 2020 then rebound to 7.6% growth in 2021. The deeper export contraction will weigh on private consumption and investment. Private investment is now expected to contract by 12.1% in 2020, then recover with 4% growth next year. The report also said the investment to produce automobiles, machinery and equipment is unlikely to expand as long as consumers continue to stay away from durable goods. Hotel, restaurant and transportation services will continue to suffer as economic activity is still weak even with more relaxed lockdown measures. The recovery in tourism may be delayed by slow progress in reopening the country to international tourists. Finally, the report also mentioned that the domestic political tensions could further unsettle an economy already struggling to cope with the impact of the pandemic. On the other hand, public spending seems to be almost the sole economic driver this year, which is expected to increase by 3.8%. Meanwhile, public investment is predicted to expand, especially in infrastructure projects for state-owned enterprises, and this will be the key to sustaining the economy to the forecast horizon. Despite the projections for this year, which seems to be very negative, the ADB forecasts Thailand's GDP to grow by 4.5% in 2021. Not quite uplifting at all for the Thai economy, but pandemic has caused global recession for around the world. So we have to think of long-term strategy, especially in restructuring the Thai economy to cope with this so-called new normal economy. Mm -hmm. And it has become challenges for many countries around the world. And it's especially it's the task by Bank of Thailand to try to take care of stability of the whole economy and to take care of the whole system of financial situation in Thailand. And in the eyes of Bank of Thailand governor, how he has foreseen the Thai economy, especially its outlook during this time of the crisis. Yesterday, I have exclusive interview with Dr. Virathai Santiprapop, Bank of Thailand governor, in the occasion that this particular month is the last month that he is going to finish 
his term of five years term. So I asked him to have evaluation of the past five years in his position as Bank of Governor of Thai, the Bank of Thailand Governor and what should Thai economy do more in the near future. Thank you very much, Governor Virathai, for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. With the assessment in the past five years, you are about to finish your term, but Thailand has been through many crises, like from the military government to elected government. And right now we are facing pandemic COVID-19. What's your recommendation in terms of policy restructuring for the economy to cope with the future? Oh, thank you for asking these questions. Um, the challenge ahead for Thailand is, is economic restructuring, as, as you have pointed out. Um, we have discussed about the needs for restructuring for, for quite some time in many circles in Thailand. Um, but the, the progress, I, I must say, has not been as fast as we would like to see. Uh, the COVID pandemic has basically fast forwarded the challenges that, that we have to face. And you know, so it enhanced the needs for restructuring. Uh, we, we need to focus more on, on economic restructuring because uh, the post-COVID world will be very different from the pre-COVID world. And, and the restructuring will have to occur at, at different levels of, of the Thai economy and Thai society. I'll give you um, an example. Uh, this, this is the first time in, in two decades that we see um, migration from cities back to rural areas. Uh, during the past two decades, uh, we have seen people from the rural areas moving into big cities, moving to Bangkok, moving to, to uh, major tourist destinations, moving into you know, industrial estate zones. Uh, but because of the pandemics, we're now seeing millions of Thai people moving back to the rural economy. And these people may not be able to return to um, their professions, their occupations um, pre-COVID because the skills requirement will be much different uh, post-COVID. The, the challenge for us is how can we, 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 we create um, rural economy um, at a much, with a much stronger f foundation so that these people can, can, can become uh, important forces in, in the rural economy, strengthening the rural economy. Because, because of the migrations from the rural, rural economy into cities during the past, decade, past two decades have also created a lot, of, a lot of problems for the Thai societies. So what should be the role of the government as the organization or as the only sector still have the most budget left at the moment to fight with COVID-19 because other stakeholders in Thai society are declining in terms of their strength so what should be the role of the government in terms of pushing economy forward? Basically, um, three dimensions that we have to think of. Uh, one is to provide relief to those that have been affected by, by, by the pandemic. Uh, secondly is the role of the government to stimulate the economy, to enhance economic recovery. And, and thirdly is to ensure that um, whatever the government uh, is doing uh, is facilitating restructuring of the Thai economy into, into the new structure that we would like to see. Unavoidable during the initial phase of the pandemic, the focus had to be on the relief, you know, making sure that you know, people could survive, from the pan with, uh, could survive from the pandemic. Uh, but now I think the focus will have to be shifted, um, more emphasis will have to be given to um, enhancing economic recovery and also um, enhancing economic restructuring. Okay. And there, there are some, some important um, policies that will, will meet uh, these two objectives. Um, the most important one is to create uh, massive, massive jobs all over the country, particularly in the rural area. And, and, and these jobs um, will not only um, help those that have been affected, that have become unemployed or underemployed because of the pandemic. But it should also be jobs whereby these people can, can gain new skills, can have opportunity for retraining, so that they can become um, you know, forces in the rural economy on a more sustainable basis. 
Um, and this will help enhance recovery of the Thai economy at the same time as help restructure the Thai economy. Looking back for your role as the Bank of Thailand governor, what is the most challenging aspect for you in the past five years? I guess there are two, there are two aspects of, um, of jobs of the, of the central bank. Uh, one is on um, preserving economic and financial stability. And, and, and the other dimension is to, um, I would call it, is a so-called developmental work to ensure that we can, you know, can, can develop, develop the financial system in such a way that would meet the requirements of the new world. On um, financial and economic stability, uh, the, the challenges uh, come from the fact that the world that we live in is becoming more volatile uh, more uncertain, more complex, and more ambiguous. We're living in the so-called VUCA world. Uh, so um, to ensure stability, we, we, need to, um, we need to look far ahead. We need to uh, make sure that we can you know, uh, detect all signals of instability, future instability, and make sure that we, we, we take appropriate actions in time. Uh, we have to make sure that we don't uh, leave behind any, any spots of fragility that could be, become a source of future crisis. Um, and the volatility that we have gone through during the past five years come from many sources. Uh, and, and many of them um, were originated from outside Thailand, you know, given the, 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 the global economic and financial conditions. Uh, so we have, to, we have to make sure that we we, we, we are fully alert uh, about all these, all these potential sources of fragility and make sure that we, 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 take, we take appropriate policy actions in time. Uh, in general, people, when, when talking about the roles of central bank, um, the mandate of preserving financial stability, in general, people don't appreciate uh, the word stability when um, everything looks fine. When, whenever a crisis emerges, then they will ask, why didn't the central bank do something three years or five years ago? Uh, so um, this is a challenge for, for, for any central bank. When we have our mandate of preserving stability, we have to look far ahead and we have to be able to implement uh, policies that might not be appreciated by, 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 by many interest groups in the society. because. Know, whatever measures that we implement, uh, there will be people who will benefit from those measures and then also people will be losing uh, stakes because of those measures. So that's, that's um, to answer your question, that's uh, the challenge related to the first part of the jobs on, on, on stability. On uh, development, uh, during the past five years, we have managed to, to push through um, a lot of um, initiatives in the financial system, particularly those related to uh, digital payment, electronic payments, and, and also on um, improving market conduct of, of the financial system. But we're obviously, um, you know, the existing players who had enjoyed the, the benefits, uh, returns from you know, the existing ways of conducting their business. Um, the, the challenge is when we're trying to introduce new things, introduce new initiatives, of a reform nature, um, we need to create the right uh, incentive structures and making sure that there's a proper buy-in from all the stakeholders so that we can move these initiatives forward and get them, get them implemented. The world is so complicated and is facing crisis, especially from COVID-19 on global economy. So what would be your recommendation to the next Bank of Thailand governor? The, the constraints for for conducting uh, policy have increased with, with COVID um, in at least two dimensions. Uh, the first dimension is related to the fact that uh, policy space of almost all policies have become much more limited. Looking at um, the, the policy interest rates of the Bank of Thailand, uh, during the pandemic, we had to lower, lower our policy interest rate three times in a row uh, and it's, it's, it's now, you know, record low at 0.5%. So it's not, not much uh, space for, 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 for further um, you know, 
reduction is, is, has become much more limited. So we have to make sure that we, 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 we use that limited space wisely, taking into account the, 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 the context and the challenges ahead of us. And, and the second constraint is related to the fact that um, the world will become much more uncertain, as you have rightly pointed out. Nobody knows how the COVID pandemic will come to an end and when it will come to an end, whether we will have a second wave or third wave or not. Even though we can manage to control uh, the domestic pandemic quite well, uh, but Thailand is a small open economy and if the world will continue to face with face with um, in, in increasing uh, newly infected cases, uh, that will have significant, continue to have significant impacts on, 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 on the Thai economy. So um, I guess uh, th th this is a challenge that, that the new governor will, 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 have to, will have to deal with, which is, which is, which is much more difficult from, from you know, during my, 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 my five years term. Um, it implies that um, you know, the, the work of the Bank of Thailand uh, over the next few years, we, we, can't, uh, we can't look at just only the, 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 the policy tools or instruments within the mandate of the Bank of Thailand. Uh, we need to ensure that there is a very good coordination of various policies, ranging from monetary policies, exchange rate policies, financial policies, um, financial institution uh, regulations policies, and also coordinations with fiscal policies, and most importantly, economic restructuring policies. Um, this is this is an important uh, important period whereby we need to we need to stimulate economic recovery while at the same time uh, uh, facilitating economic restructuring. Thanks to pandemic crisis, indeed, that the next, the successor of Bank of Thailand governor will have so much challenges to tackle, could not, especially on how to recover economically after the pandemic. So it needs like new normal practice in terms of regulating the whole economic system and especially on financial systems. So that's a lot of work for the next governor of Bank of Thailand. Yes. And we'll be leaving you tonight with images of the projection of flags of the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Israel and the United States on the walls of Jerusalem's old city to mark the Israeli normalization deals with the UAE and Bahrain as the White House as the White House hosts the signing ceremony, which is a very historical moment here. And that wraps up tonight's edition of Thai PBS World Tonight. Thank you very much for watching. Swati Thank you. Bye for now.